like hopefully I am live in multiple places. If I am not in live multiple places, uh, what are you going to do? All right, so I need to bring this over so I can potentially answer some questions here while we are getting our game on. If you are not familiar with who I am, hello, welcome. My name is Alston Godbolt, and I like to talk about starting online businesses and helping people make money online the ethical way. Um, that's a, quite a bit different than a lot of people in this space. And so, um, oh, there I am. Cool. All right, so I can see myself. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get this gaming session in. Now, you might be asking, why am I playing MLB 24, the show, uh, while talking about this? It's simple because um, I have a YouTube channel dedicated to playing video games, this game, in fact, and so. I'm killing two birds at one stone. How come they don't have a 4th of July thing that they're giving away? I think I think the developers of MLB The Show missed out on an opportunity. They should have, um, in my opinion, they should have... They, they should have given away a pack for people that are playing on 4th of July. Anyway, uh, I actually do not like the Home Run Derby because I've never won it. And uh, I always struggle to hit home runs. So where am I? I got to turn this down just a little bit. And so you guys are gonna you guys are gonna watch me struggle to uh, hit home runs. So that's gonna be fun. The other thing I don't like about this is like you can't fast forward through the entire thing. You have to like fast forward through each individual player. I wonder can I? It won't let me uh, see. Like yeah, it won't let me fast forward, which is annoying. Uh, so you can watch me hit a bunch of pop flies and, and not hit any home runs. But I guess that's better than not making the All-Star game. Also, another issue that I dislike about this game is you should get rewards, essentially, for making the Home Run Derby. You should get rewards or packs for making the All-Star game and making the playoffs. You should be rewarded for those things. And unfortunately, I think... The developers of this game have missed the mark on that opportunity. I'm not sure why they they don't, but yeah, unfortunately, I think it's a it's a huge miss because what's the incentive of making the playoffs and hitting home runs and uh, all of that stuff if you're not going to be rewarded for it? Just my thoughts on random MLB 24 the show. Well, I think it's always been like that. I don't know. I don't know if uh, uh, if it's ever been different, but if you've got questions, I've got answers. I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Um, essentially, killing two birds at one t with one stone. And I would appreciate it if you guys could give this video a like, comment, follow, share, do all of that stuff. Let the algorithm know that this content is helpful. And um, yeah, so it'll be sent out to more people. Do, 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 do. And another weird thing. And another thing. I think it's weird that you can actually like your own TikToks. Ooh, 20 home runs is going to be tough to beat. I didn't even realize, but he's already had 20 home runs. I don't know if I've ever hit 20 home runs, 23 home runs in a um, home run derby. So we'll see. We'll see. This might be over really quick. 23 home runs. All right. Where are we playing at? Uh, was that foul? I don't even know where we're playing. That's another foul. A little early on all of these. We're playing in Atlanta. I'm off to not a bad start. Not a not a terrible start. I wonder, I haven't watched the Home Run Derby in a long time, but do they still allow the kids to chase down the, the fly balls? Uh, I might be destined to make it out of the first round this time. Like I said, I don't think I've ever... Um, I, I know I've never won the Home Run Derby. I don't think that I've... I may have never even made it out of the first round. 
let's see. If you've got questions, I'll be able to answer them in just a moment. I need to call a timeout here. Uh, timeout, timeout. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, a little early on that one. Early on that one. I could probably get to whatever, uh, 24, if I wasn't early on every one of my home runs. That was a little... All right, that was a good one. Now, I wonder, does it matter? Because right now I am using uh, the power swing. Does it matter if I just hit normal? Hmm. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to get to 24. Yep, like I said, I never, ever, 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 ever in my life won the uh, home run derby. It's just a tough thing to do. Yeah, too many foul balls. But the good news is this will be over quick. And I will be able to, yeah. Uh, now, can I get out of this now? Advance. Okay. Uh, fast forward to the end of the derby. Perfect. Great. So I made it to the end of the derby. Very simple. Very easy. I wonder, am I... Am I live where I want to be live? Okay, great. It looks like I am live where I want to be. Cool. Uh, so let's exit out of here, and then we get to play in the All-Star game. <sighs> Let me ch also check one other thing here. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Um, just a little bit about the setup here. I am streaming on something called Streamlabs because I'm using a Mac. And I have to stream from Streamlabs to TikTok. And then I have to connect it's something called Restream.io to Streamlabs. So I can't actually see a whole lot of what's going on, which can be a little bit annoying. But uh, here we are. And so um, the normal process of doing all of this is different. Much, much different. I can usually just stream from... Uh, what's it called? I can usually just stream from Restream to whatever platforms because I am streaming on multiple platforms. Um, I'm streaming on TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, and, and maybe one or two other places. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Um, and to further complicate things, you're able to, I'm, I'm in, in order to record this game, in order to record this game, I'm recording from my PlayStation to OBS via something called PS5 Remote Play or PlayStation Remote Play. And so there's a lot of a lot of intricacies going on right now, which uh, somehow it all works. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it is all working. But let's talk. Let's talk about what I'm doing right now. Right now, I am playing a video game. And there are, I would say, thousands, tens of thousands of people that are making money, various amounts of money, doing this exact thing. And basically, the, what they're doing is, is they've identified a video game that they like, and that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people also like. And they're creating a variety of different types of, of videos. Either they're creating videos like Let's Play, Let's Play, where... You know, people essentially watch them play video games, which is fine. Another, I think, better way to go is to create videos where you're actually solving a problem. One of the problems with like the let's play type stuff is there's so many out there, so many people out there playing let's play, but there's I, I would say there's probably more people out there playing Let's Play than people that are interested in watching Let's Play videos, if that makes sense. And so it's kind of saturated and, and that can be kind of competitive. What I would recommend that you do if you want to, let's say, start playing video games to make money, 
the what I would do is start identifying questions that people are asking. So someone might be asking like, how to steal a base uh, if they're playing MLB 24 or how to hit a home run or how to win the home run derby. They're asking those types of questions, especially if, if you're creating content like YouTube, um, like how to hit a home run and or how to win the home run derby or how to make the playoffs. They're asking those types of questions and you can create content to answer those questions, which is really cool. And when you do that, you're going to start attracting people that are interested in that video game. And so there's no problem mixing in let's play, but let's play shouldn't be your whole content strategy, essentially. For example, and I, I keep talking about this because I'm really excited, in about two weeks, a new game's coming out called NCAA, uh, NCAA Football. 2025 or 2024 it hasn't been it hasn't been out in like 20 years right and so there's going to be a lot of people that are flocking to that game and the mistake that a lot of people are going to make is they're going to try and make let's play content in order to um, grow a, a youtube channel what i think they should do instead is create content solving a problem i was really late on that swing create content based on questions that people might be asking how to run the option, how to, you know, how to lead a wide receiver in throwing, how to recruit properly. These are all going to be questions that people are asking. And if you want to get into the video game space and you want to build a following, that's the way to do it. Answer questions that people are asking. It's called keyword research. Um, and then you're going to optimize your content, search engine, optimize your content. And that's how you can grow a following, right? Let's plays are great. Oh, he caught that. Did not mean to do that. Um, let's plays are great. And there's a time and place for all of it. It's just that if you are brand new and you don't have a following at all, you want to start building credibility and authority by answering questions. Because in the very beginning, nobody cares about you. Everyone looks at the large, hello, uh, Flix, how's it going? Um, nobody, and this is a tough pill to swallow. In the very beginning, nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about uh, who you are or what you do. The only thing they care about is how much do you make a day? That's quite the interesting question. Um, nobody cares who you are, what you do. They care. The only thing they care about is if you can solve their problem or not. And... So, hey, Flix, how much do you make a day? <laughs> That's probably a better question. In addition, uh, I always find it weird when people ask how much someone makes because what I make isn't going to help you grow a business. It's not going to help you get started. You're going to think, wow, that's a lot of money. I could never do that type of thing. Uh, and he's safe. And they're going to say, hey, I can never do it. So how much do you make? And what's your goal? And why do you spend so much time worrying about what other people make and not focusing on what you make? Anyway, like I said, I always think it's strange when people ask how much does someone make, uh, quite honestly, <laughs> because if I told you, you would be, you'd be shocked. You'd be like, oh, I, there's, no, there's no way I could make that amount of money. Uh, so tell me, how much do you make? Anyway, if we can continue on. Uh, if you're just getting started, let's say you're in the video game niche, but this can apply to everything. If you're in the makeup niche, if you are in skincare or health or fitness or whatever it might be, um, start by answering questions. Amazing. I couldn't expect a better answer from you. Uh, I don't know if that's sarcasm or what, but anyway, start with helping solving someone else's problem because at the end of the day they don't nobody cares about you they care about the problems you can solve for them and if you can't exhibit that you solve problems for other people then no one's going to follow you no one's going to know like and trust you once you've built up this credibility of no like and trust then you can start doing uh like let's plays and more selfish type stuff and not selfish Oh, I should not have swung at that. Um, not selfish, like self-serving, 
selfish stuff like hey stuff that I actually like to do hopefully that makes sense so in the very beginning um, identify questions that people are asking problems that they need help with uh, for example I'll give you a really example uh, earlier today my wife tells me that the light in her car the brake light in her car went out and the, the the bulb went out and so it needs to be replaced so what did I do I jumped on YouTube and I looked up the make model and year of her car to see how easy it would be to replace it lo and behold that video got hundreds of thousands of views these are simple basic everyday things and I'm not a mechanic or anything like that but it's one of those things that I realized that I could fix so I went down to the auto parts store got back fixed it but if you just learn to create content and content can be in literally anything you can make money um, in the very beginning as I've mentioned multiple times your first goal should be to make enough money to pay a bill pay off your electric bill every single month or pay off your groceries every single month if your grocery bill is five hundred dollars per month your first goal should be to make five hundred dollars every single month I think people that are that are trying to make 10k in 90 days without any skills will always fail you're always gonna fail that simply because you don't have any skills and you need skills if if you want people to pay you you need skills I shouldn't have swung at that, right? If in order to be successful, to make any money on the internet, you need some sort of skills. Uh, dead center. Let's see if that stretches. Yep, great. You need some sort of skills. And if you don't have those skills, you're not going to make any money. Now, what I'm a bigger proponent of is learning skills and then applying those skills and setting realistic expectations. If you can set realistic expectations, you can be wildly successful on the internet. First, uh, first, first goal should be, I don't know, have the internet pay your groceries. That should be your goal. Your life will be much less stressful if the internet, if you can find a way to have the internet pay your grocery bill. Again, assuming your grocery bill is $500 per month. And then once that happens, your goal should be to have the internet pay for two bills or three bills. That way, you are building up a, a stream of income or multiple income streams that um, not only are you building up multiple income streams, you're building something that's sustainable, something that um, will be worthwhile Oh, that was a great pick. Anyway, uh, what questions do you guys have for me? Do you have questions? Mm, power swing to drive in all the runners. That's pretty lofty goal there. To drive in all of the runners. I need at least a double, probably a triple. Do-do-do-do-do. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, I could have slung at that one. Um, yeah, so first goal, have the internet pay one bill. And you do that by identifying an area of focus, a niche, some people will call it. Identify where you want to create content. And once you identify where you're going to create, or identify what you want to talk about, I should say, then you need to identify where you're going to create content. I really want to hit that car one day. I haven't been able to do it. Um, I haven't been able to hit that car. Mm, it's nine to five. How did we give up four runs in the top of the 11th? Oh, that's a double. That's a double. Um, I'm gonna, he's gonna get thrown out. Ooh, he barely made that. Awesome. What was I saying? So you got to identify what you want to talk about. 
The next step is to identify where you want to talk about it because that's just as important as uh, the other aspect of what you want to talk about because you've got to remember there are 4 billion people in the world that have access to the internet. Not all 4 billion people are hanging out in the same spot. Some people, I've got a friend who hates TikTok. He refuses to get a TikTok account. So I wouldn't be able to reach him on TikTok. There are millions of people out there that absolutely hate TikTok. There are some people out there that hate Facebook and Instagram and even YouTube. And so you've got to identify where your target audience is hanging out. The other thing that's really important is identifying where you want to create content. A lot of people skip over this. Identify where you want to create content. Because I could tell you, yeah, go create content on TikTok, but if you don't like being there, if you don't like creating content on TikTok, it it doesn't make any sense. It, It doesn't make a difference. Identify where you like hanging out, and then you can uh, learn the system. One of the biggest misconceptions out there is that the algorithm hates you. The algorithm doesn't hate you. Um, It's based on consumer or customer behavior. And when customer behavior changes, uh, another ground out. When customer behavior changes, that's when the algorithm changes. Because the algorithm's job, its only job is to keep people on the platform, is to keep people consuming content, right? And it looks at all of the videos and all, all of the stuff that people are watching and what people are spending their most time on And that's what it's going to recommend. So the algorithm does not hate you. The algorithm is simply uh, simply based on consumer behavior. And if you create if if you create content that people like, that people are interested in, people will engage with it. And the algorithm's job is to find more people that are, are that will like it. So the algorithm doesn't hate you. Um, you just have to figure out what the consumer wants to hear and what's wants to see. And, and that can change over time because, you know, we change, we adapt. So the algorithm doesn't hate you. You just have to learn what resonates with your target audience. Hmm. So let's assume, and then the other thing too, a lot of, one of the bigger mistakes that people make, I shouldn't have swung at that one. One of the mistakes that people make is they try and create content everywhere. They, they try and be everywhere when in reality, you don't have to do that. You can just be in one place. You can have lots of success if you just create content on one platform. You don't have to be everywhere. Um, in fact, what I encourage all of my uh, clients and students to do is to focus on one platform in the very beginning. And then after you are consistently uploading and you are in a rhythm and in a routine, that's when you should look at uploading to a second or third platform. That enables you to focus on one, perfect that one, and um, understand how that algorithm works. Do, 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 do. I'm really surprised I didn't have a, uh, a, a pack for, they, they didn't have a, a pack for uh, 4th of July. I, I think that's a miss. Maybe they did and it expired yesterday. I should have logged on to check, but that's a miss. Uh, let me see. I got to check my OBS here. I right, got about six minutes. So after this, uh, after, after this, this game will probably shut this one down and start a new a new game. So what I do is I will do a 30 minute game. I'll do usually I'll play for an hour and have two 30 minute sessions. But since uh, I'm attempting to I'm trying to go live on TikTok for an hour and a half, that means I'll have three sessions. Um, I don't know how that's going to work out. In about two weeks, let's see, today's the 5th, 
Yeah, exactly. Two weeks from today. Uh, one thing that I really consider doing, I don't know if I'm still going to do it. I, I probably won't do it. Uh, I was thinking about doing 24 hours of NCAA football where I play it for 24 hours straight. That would be insane. Um, I, I don't know that I would be able to, to, to do that, but it's something that I'm kind of interested in. I know that I'll probably start playing it at midnight or whenever it's available to me. It might be available a little bit uh, a little bit earlier because I'm in the central time zone. Anyway, now you might be wondering, I've, I've talked about being a content creator, strategic content creator, whatever you want to call it. You might be wondering or asking yourself, what type of content do you want to create? And the type of content you create will heavily depend on where you're creating the content. If you're on YouTube, you want to make SEO based content at the very beginning, search engine optimized content. So you want to create content based on what people are searching for in the very beginning on YouTube. Um, one thing that you can do to do that, achieve that is to another ground out is to find a bunch of people that are already in your space. There's a few ways to do it. Find a bunch of people that are already in your space and piggyback off of what they're already doing because they've already proven it to work. Another thing you can do, a more consistent thing you can do is go up to the search bar in YouTube and type in whatever your niche is and then go through each letter of the alphabet. That's called alphabet soup. So for example, um, if I were playing MLB 24 the show or MLB, yeah, MLB the show 24, whatever it's called. I would go up to the search bar and type in the exact name of the game. And then I would hit the space bar and look at all the different things that popped up. And usually people are saying like how to pitch, how to, how to do whatever in MLB 24, the show, whatever it might be. And so I want to create that content that is searchable in the very beginning. I want to build credibility. I want to build uh, what some people would say cachet. Oh, that made it through. Great. And so that's what I would do on that's what I would do on YouTube. Create searchable content. Stuff that's easy for Oh, he he got me. He got me. Stuff that's easy to find. Right. Um, if I'm on like TikTok, I'm gonna create content that focuses on people's pain points, interest, desire, motivation, and things that they're thinking, but maybe they're not saying out loud. And the reason why there's a difference there is simply because there's a different level of awareness. If people are going to YouTube and they're searching about MLB 24, the show, they are aware of this video game. Um, on TikTok, they might be looking up something or they might be asking questions about fun games to play on your PlayStation. So there's a different level of awareness there that you can use to reach people. Seven to four. Um, and then also on TikTok, I would be creating content on stuff like things that your target audience is thinking, but maybe not saying out loud. Uh, for example, people often are embarrassed if, if their friends are able to do something that, that they're not able to do. Maybe like, Hey, are you tired of your friends? out catching you when you go out to fish or out driving you when, when you're golfing. Here's, here's a simple tip to add 10 more yards to your, your driver because chicks dig the long ball. Shout out to Ken Griffey Jr. There. Anyway, different awareness levels for different platforms. And that's something really important. You've got to understand because if you just create content like here's how to here's how you can swing your golf club people are going to tune off of that because they've heard that before they've seen it before but if you can create content at a different awareness level and and um hit at their pain points 
pain point being their friends are always out driving them and your, their friends are always waiting on them, on you. Your friends are always waiting on you or them because you your drive is 10 yards shorter than their drive. Uh, oh, so I got to stop this one here. So we're going to click on 